and welcome to another Kill a Kill If video. Today we've got a character breakdown for dual wield Ryuko. Dual wield Ryuko is a very explosive character. Her attacks dash across the entire stage, and with some of the best projectiles in the game, she can melt your health bar incredibly fast when she has the meter. Unfortunately, she also seems to randomly drop a lot of her combos because of this insane mobility. Especially if she's near a wall, opponents will just fall out of combos, and that makes her unreliable. But when her stuff is working, she's one of the best in the game. But let's start simple by talking about some of her normals. Her close range attacks are fairly standard, nothing particularly impressive or terrible about it. She slashes her opponent four times, and then the combo ends. You can't cancel the finisher into anything else. Tilting your stick horizontally with the attack button gives you this horizontal slash, good for catching sidesteps. It builds meter, but not as much as other characters. It doesn't even build a full bar of meter. Usually the horizontal combo builds a full bar and a half. So if you want the meter, you'll want to go a different route for sure. The horizontal attack does allow it to cancel into special attacks, and this attack gets buffed at one valor. It behaves similarly, but deals more damage since it has more hits. Tilting your stick vertically has Ryuko do this upper slash attack. This is an anti-air attack good for countering homing dashes and if you keep the stick tilted that way you'll go into an aerial combo which we'll talk about in a second. This combo also gets buffed at one valor. Similar to her horizontal attacks she gets more hits in thus dealing more damage and giving you new places in which to put your special moves. Moving on to her jumping attacks there are two types of aerial combos. Both look very similar but they differ in the follow-ups that you can do. If you start a combo in the air for example by using a homing dash on a jumping opponent you'll see the first First attack, a spin, and then a finisher. In this version of the aerial combo, your finisher doesn't have to be the end of your combo. You can follow up with projectiles, with guard breaks, and continue the combo from there. If you're close enough to the ground, you'll even land during the spin attack, and you can choose where to go from there. Projectiles, guard breaks, or maybe even just more attacks, it's up to you. And it's also a good place to put a Valor Burst. The second aerial combo is one you'll see very often if you start your combos on the ground. It's very similar, but you can see the difference because of the spin attack. It is now much faster. And from this one, you can only do the finisher. There won't be any follow-up afterwards. So the aerial combo you get depends on how you started it. If you went straight into an aerial combo, you can extend it. If you start it on the ground, then this aerial version is pretty much going to finish it. Then, if you initiate or extend a combo with other buttons, the attack button then becomes very unique. Let's say you initiate the combo with some projectiles. The attack button becomes this very fast dash attack that allows you to extend combos into the air, or simply activate Bloody Valor or throw a special attack. It's a tool that you'll need to grow used to as you play Ryuko, because it allows you to get big damage no matter what your startup is. However, it's one of the biggest culprits for Ryuko's instability when it comes to combos. Being near a wall can make this thing drop very easily, so be ready for that. Moving on to Ryuko's ranged attacks, they're slow, but they're some of the best in the game. Not only do a lot of them give you wall splats, they have insane damage. Pressing the long range attack button gives you two grounded projectiles. They look very similar to base Ryuko's, but they have a much bigger range. And on top of that, both the first and the second projectile can cause a wall splat. In the air, these projectiles are very similar. Ryuko jumps back down to the ground and throws another two projectiles, but this time, only the first one will give you a wall splat. Holding down the long range attack button gives you this charged projectile that deals very good damage and has high priority. This one comes out in a straight line, unlike base Ryuko's, and whether whether you hit or miss, this projectile comes with a very fast follow-up that can actually wall splat. In the air, the attack is very similar, but the follow-up is very different. It can still follow up, but uh, it's another projectile that comes out in a straight line, making it easier to be sidestepped. Don't forget that you can always follow up projectiles with your close range attack button for that very fast dash attack. This makes projectiles much more reliable for this character than base Ryuko's, plus they deal a lot more damage, especially if you implement them in your combos. This fast projectile deals incredible damage. And you can cancel it into special attacks. This will become one of your favorite combo tools if you play dual wield Ryuko, especially if you manage to get one Valor, at which point the fast projectile becomes two fast projectiles and allows you to deal big damage very fast. Damage that your opponent cannot burst through, since we're talking about projectiles. If they burst, they'll just get hit by whatever comes next. This is what makes Ryuko absolutely deadly, and I'll be sure to come back to this ability later in the video. In an aerial combo, the long range attack brings Ryuko back down to the ground. From here, you can 
cancel it to some of your special attacks. So if you're in the air with meter, this might be your best finisher. And Ryuko's awesome weapons are not over. Her break attacks are also some of the best in the game. They are fast, they let you follow up with deadly combos, but they are not armored like base Ryuko's. First of all, on the ground, she has this knee into dive kick. Both of these hits are guard breaks, and the first one is an anti-air on top of that. So it's amazing for countering homing dashes. If it connects, it will grant you a dash follow-up for an aerial attack close to the ground, one that will allow you to land during Ryuko's spinning attack. In the air, her break attack is so fast, it's almost not even fair. It's very hard to react to this one, and it's also two hits. One once she lands, and another one once she kicks. And if you land this on an opponent, the follow-up is a grounded combo. If you put a break attack in a combo, her guard breaks on the ground can also be used to extend them. Ryuko does this upper kick, which takes the opponent into the air, allowing her to have an aerial follow-up. However, if you put a guard break attack in an aerial combo, she'll just end it with the knee attack, so it's not a great option overall. Moving on to her dash attacks. Her dash close range attack is fairly standard. Her dash long range attack throws a projectile in a straight line that you can follow up with your fast dash attack. And the dash break attack takes the opponent into the air with the upper kick that we covered already. Moving on to her special attacks. Her close range special is a very fast dash activation. Extremely easy to put into any combo and if it connects, it actually stops time and deals the damage as time resumes. It's a fairly standard special attack. Almost every character has this type of fast special activation thing they can just put into any combo. And this is Ryuko's. Her long range attack, however, is fairly unique. It's a projectile attack and the activation is a bit slower than you'd like. Sometimes I'm able to connect it after this combo, but most times I just drop it because of the time that it takes to activate. If you land this projectile, however, you can follow up by continuing to press the long range attack button. You can throw up to three projectiles, but that's not all you can do. After the first and second projectiles, instead of following with the third, you can also follow up with your close range attack button and Ryuko will do her dash attack that you should know well at this point. And even though you can follow up after the second projectile, that might put enough distance between you and your opponent for you to miss that follow up. So sometimes it's actually better to just follow up after the first attack. At Valor 1, this attack also becomes buffed, making Valor 1 extremely valuable for Ryuko. And Ryuko's final special attack is Snippity Snips Twister, where Ryuko starts spinning around and then slashes the opponent. Because this is her special break attack, this goes through an opponent's guard. You can move very slightly after activating this special, but it ends very quickly compared to base Ryuko's attack. It does vacuum the opponent, so if they are close to you, they will get pulled into your attack. But it's nothing compared to what this attack becomes at Valor 2. This special becomes a super attack, and you can move around for a longer period of time before it actually connects with the cinematic attack. And the vacuum effect reaches really far away. Plus, if it lands, it plays this cutscene and deals a lot of damage. This increased vacuum effect makes it possible to put this special into combos. So if you need to deal some fast damage to finish a fight, this can be a tremendous weapon. At Valor 3, Ryuko gains access to her Senyi Soshitsu. She jumps forward very slightly and does this horizontal slash. This is pretty easy to incorporate into many places of her combo, as long as your opponent is pretty close to you. And now that we know her moves, here are some tips on how to play Dual Wield Ryuko. It's insane how much damage she deals when she has meter. She can start a high damage combo from so many different places, which makes her a deadly threat every time she has meter. Ryuko is one of the fastest characters in the roster, so it can be hard to react to her stuff. Particularly, her break attacks are so hard to react to. Her jumping break attack comes out so fast that if the opponent isn't already expecting it, it's almost impossible to side step it. And it's even more dangerous once Ryuko gets faster with Valor 1. In my opinion, Ryuko really wants to get Valor 1. The first level of Valor gives her increased damage on her double-edge decapitation moves. What are these moves? Well, the, the, the game actually doesn't explain it very well, but this is not only her long-range attack special, it's also the fast projectile that comes out at the end of a combo when you press the long-range attack. First of all, it gives you that second fast projectile, and the damage difference is really significant. This is your main damage dealer in most of your combos, and that alone makes Valor 1 incredible for Yuko. On top of that, it makes her faster, and her vertical and horizontal combos get buffed. These are definitely awesome benefits, but the first buff alone makes Valor 1 a priority for Yuko. Valor 2 is optional, in my opinion. If you have it, your break special becomes a super, becoming much easier to catch opponents, or to combo into this ability, which gives you very fast damage, perfect for 
finishing off an opponent. But with Valor 1, you'll already have enough damage to kill most characters in the roster with a single combo. A combo full of projectiles where one mistimed burst means they didn't get out of anything, just means they managed to get caught in the combo again. Luckily for Yuko, there are many places where she can try to Valor up. After the aerial spinning attack close to the ground, for instance. After the fast grounded dash attack that follows up many of her moves. If you've got two bars, you should be able to put this in your combo. And Yuko isn't weak without one Valor by any means, she's just that much stronger with it. Here's a TOD that is actually not that situational. This can happen pretty easily in a match, and it requires only one Valor and three bars of meter to start. This touch of death teaches you a couple of things about Ryuko. One, it teaches you that you can throw two attacks into a break attack and still continue your combo with a dash. Two, it teaches you to measure the distance of your fast dash attack follow-up after your long range attack special. Three, it teaches you to throw those devastating projectiles that just melt health bars. Seriously, with or without meter, throw these things every time you have a chance. And once you've practiced this combo, you'll notice that you can start it in many different ways. You can simply start it from a guard break attack, which as we covered, is an anti-air. So if you counter a homing dash, you can go straight into this combo. That's a huge punish. And there are other ways to get to this combo if you're in a different situation. For instance, if you catch a jumping opponent with an air dash, you can do the full aerial combo, go into projectile and bam, special attack. From there, you know what to do. You've already practiced the rest. If you get a wall splat with your projectiles, you can just walk up or dash and start the same touch of death you just practiced. This combo can kill everyone in the entire cast, except for maybe Gamagori, because he's got the biggest health pool. And if it wasn't for her combo, randomly dropping, she would definitely be one of the strongest characters in the roster. <laughs> And that's another character breakdown for Kill La Kill If. Got a character you'd like me to cover? Let me know in the comments down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. We cover anime games here. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.